Hello and welcome to the Wolf Digest. I'm your host, Amaros, and today we're going to be talking about the upcoming Radeon and Ryzen launch on 7.7, as well as discussing some of the leaks that have been coming out. It's still days away, well, two days actually, before it launches. There's plenty of things that are leaking through the cracks. We'll discuss a few of them and what it means for launch day. Also, we'll be talking about, of course, the NVIDIA Super release. Those cards are actually pretty amazing. We'll have to get to those, but first, let's go and cover some of the leaks. We have the Ryzen 5 3600 non-X, of course, that leaked. Passmark has it listed here as actually outperforming the 9900K by just a hair here, not too much, but I would take this benchmark with a pretty hefty dose of salt because we know from the performance the 9900k actually boost clocks up to the 5 gigahertz mark with a base clock of 3.6 and the cpu we're looking at here the 3600 is a 3.6 that only tops out at 4.2 so either that has some amazing ipc gains or these numbers are just wrong i'll let you decide on which one of the two it is, but we do have some other benchmarks to help us get a good idea of where this actually should land. We have this entire full review of the 3600 that actually leaked out from a Spanish website. This site actually obviously shouldn't have released this yet, but they don't really cover a whole lot, but some of the things they do cover is single and multi-threaded. You can see here in Cinebench, it actually gets a really decent multi-threaded score here, coming in just under the 2700X. Of course, that's an 8-core, 16-thread CPU versus this 6-core, 12-thread. But we have it coming out just above the 1700X, which is actually pretty phenomenal. Uh, we come down to the single core, and it is outperforming the 2700X by a fairly large margin coming in just under the 9900k but it does come under it as opposed to over it so something to think about and then we come down to like w prime on a single core and it actually still comes out under the 9900k as well as the 9700k actually but it is still well ahead of the 2700x 2600 and of course the apus and on down the line here and coincidentally all of the older generation i7s and some of the i5s we look at the multi-threaded w prime obviously the more cores the better and it comes in right here and here obviously behind the eight cores we get up to something that i like to do x264 benchmarks and it comes out just behind the 2700x which is behind the 9700K and the 9900K, but only by margins here. And I would really like to see what the 8-core would do against it, the 9900K in this benchmark. Come to latency, you can see 3600 is paying a price here, even versus the 2700X, and definitely against the 9900K. We go and look at the type of RAM they used here which has a heavy effect on that latency. They are using 3200 megahertz RAM, I believe it was. Yep, right there. So if you wanna get lower latency on that, down in the uh, mid 60s, you're gonna to need to shoot for a 3733 megahertz RAM. It's actually the performance sweet spot there. You could step back to 3600 if you, you know, are looking to save a little bit of cash and it won't affect you too bad. We're talking 68 instead of 65 kind of nanosecond range. So nothing too bad there. Uh, we go down to some of the more uh, benchmarks you would be immediately familiar with. We got Firestrike. Note this is not the extreme version. This is just running some normal settings. I went and looked at these numbers compared to the extreme settings and these are all significantly higher than they actually score in the Firestrike Extreme benchmark. So you can't translate these unless if you go look at lower settings. But you can see the 3600 
is actually scoring right behind the 9900K and well above the 2700X, about halfway in between there. So some really good performance improvements. If we go down the list here, pretty much in line all the way down, all just right behind either the 2700X or the 9900K, which is pretty phenomenal considering this CPU is actually $199. Now, six core, 12 thread, is that future proof? Eh, probably not, yeah, but it's gonna work pretty good for games today. If you look at upgrading in the next two, three years, this would be a pretty nice CPU to have right now if you're kind of strapped for cash. We go down through these games. Obviously, 9900K is by far the winner here in Far Cry. Yeah, that one doesn't look very good for any of these CPUs, even the old i7s here. But the 3600 is definitely doing far strides compared to the 2700X. This makes me think that this game probably has a little bit of something going on, probably dealing with latencies or something with the AMD architecture. I'm not quite sure, but it's definitely favoring that 9900K, probably for the boost clock on the single core, actually, now that I think about it. We have more modern laid out games here where they actually take proper advantage of the CPU, and you can see the scaling from that. Definitely and Final Fantasy 15, yeah, right there. Warhammer, pretty much in line. They conclude with just those handful of benchmarks, so we really don't get to see a whole lot of performance here. But I did go and collect some other benchmarks because, lo and behold, there are some leaks that came out right here for the 3700X, and I went and compiled some of these together to give us this little nifty chart. Went and pulled up the 9900K as well as the 9700K. We have the 3900X, which also got leaked as a Fire Strike Extreme. Now, that measures GPU, but there is a physics score that measures the actual CPU performance. And boy, oh boy, <laughs> we have that eight core 9900K coming in right here, just shy of 25K. The 3700X, which is a nice little 8 core as well, 25011. So just better than the 9900K and then 3900X. Just kind of blows them all away. And I do have these sorted by price. So you can see 500 bucks, 490. That's the best price I found on Newegg right now for the 9900K. You got the 9700K at 400, which is just pitiful <laughs> you have the 3700x at 329 scoring pretty nicely here and the old 2700x at 308 dollars right now actually scoring just shy of 20k so definitely some nice performance boosting there so like i said the 3900x did get its details leaked a little bit right here you can see 29777 oh yeah and this was running with 3733 MHz RAM, and it has it down there in the details. Moving on. Ah, uh, yes. Here's the details for you. 3733 right there. It's running two 8-gig sticks, probably because the 16-gig sticks probably have a hard time getting up there. But we will see on review day if anyone even tries 16-gig sticks. That's what I like to run. So we have the 3900X. Oh, yeah. Proven faster than even the 9980XE. There we go. Scroll down. This is all going to be in Geekbench, I believe. So let's pull that up here. Yeah, Geekbench 4. So I went and compared this against a 9900K, against that 3900X. And there's a whole bunch of benchmarks in here where the 9900K is pretty heavily overclocked and we don't know if they're on LN or any of that. So rather than risk it, I went and pulled somewhere in the middle, you know, something that's pretty heavily overclocked, but not quite LN2 overclocked. And you can see single core 
yeah, the 9900K still far exceeds the single core of the 3900X. But we are talking about a 12 core CPU versus an 8. But when we go down to the multi core, you can definitely see just pretty much raffle stumps all the way down the list, as we would expect an extra four core, eight thread of processing power to do. And the thing that makes this notable, they're the same price. So that kind of leads you up to what you want to use here single core or multi core. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's not that hard of a choice. We also have some leaks from the 5700 and 5700 XT for the packaging. You can see, ooh, yeah, boxes, nice clean design, kind of floats inside here. Not too bad a presentation. You have the XT, the famous dent. <laughs> <laughs> they have a little slogan in here saying bend the rules so I guess they're trying to call that a bend rather than a dent we'll call it a dent and then of course the anniversary edition this definitely looks like a pretty nice CPU GPU with all the gold trim and as I said we wanted to talk about super ah and this shows the super with the 5700 XT leaked benchmarks in here too. So let's go ahead and walk through this here. We got Wolfenstein and you can see all of the GeForce cards stacked up here. You got your 5700. Yeah, not too bad. It sits right around the 1080 Ti, the 27, 2070 Super, just barely above that. So pretty in line. 20, 2070 FE, which is the old normal 2070, comes in just below. Those are being superseded by the supers. We go down Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, yeah, that was at 1440, so 1080. We have 5700 XT coming in once again just behind the 2070 Super. Far Cry, right behind 2070 Super. And 2060 Super is behind the 5700. Just barely. Barely. And Vega 64, all these older gen stuff down here. 1080 Ti is still coming in pretty strong, just above the 2070 Super. So that's still actually a pretty decent card. If you can find it on the secondhand market, it might actually be the better way to go than even getting the 2080. <laughs> We can see 2070 Founders Edition and Super here, just once again, barely ahead of the 5700 XT. Yeah, Wolfenstein at 1440p. You can see all of the new cards are down here, but even the 2060 FE is above the 5700 XT. Now this is kind of weird, but I did do some a little bit of digging and I understand that the it compute and the rasterization pipelines in the Navi are actually two separate pipelines. And when you use Fraps or any of these kind of uh, frame rate capture software, it actually has to synchronize those two pipelines and that causes a degradation in performance, about 5%, so not much, but it is enough to partially explain why they are running down here at the bottom with the 1660 Ti. I mean, that's that's pretty poor. So obviously there's something wrong if it's such a radical difference from the lineup in all these other games. So um, we'll just kind of chalk that one up to possibly a poor benchmark, but I bet you it's going to show up in a lot of reviews come 7.7. And it's not going to fare well for Navi with whatever bug or problem that that is with either their drivers or more likely the fraps and other kind of video capture software out there. I think they need to make some adjustments to fix that bug. Either way, we'll move on. We got Time Spy on 3D Mark. Yeah, lands just behind the Super. Yeah, obviously if Vega 64 is way down here and stuff too. It might not be faring too well on this actual benchmark. I mean, even the Radeon 7, which is barely right there. 
these should be somewhat higher. Looks like it's kind of favoring NVIDIA. We have 2060 Super right here again on DX12. Looks like that's the same benchmark actually. Yeah. Something slightly different. Overall score. Yeah, GPU score, overall score. That's why. Moving on. Fire Strike DX11. Yeah, see, this is a little more likely. We have 2060 Super down here where it should have been with 2070 Super right here. I'm actually surprised the 5700 XT slightly beat it. And here's DX11 again, once again, slightly ahead. And the one thing I also did here is that DX11 is actually performing better than DX12 on the 5700. And it looks like that might be the case. I mean, you can see it right here. It's definitely up. So that might be something else to see. And system power consumption with an i9-9900K. You can see here where it lands on total system power. Yeah, so looks like the 2070 Super is taking a little bit of a hit in power in order to get the extra boost clocks and base clocks that it's going to be running. And the other thing to note is the chip that it's using. The Super 2070 Super, that is running a TU-104. So that's the chip that the 2080 based on. That actually is the chip that it should have been running from day one, quite honestly. It's the previous generations had been all 104s for the 2070 line, and it wasn't until the RTX line that they actually snuck a TU-106 up into the old 2070 RTX card, trying to sell that lower-end GPU chip at a more premium price. And so they've once again just kind of moved everything back down to where the pricing should have been at the launch of the RTX series to begin with, rather than the atrocious prices that we actually saw. And so this lineup is what we should have had last year. And I'm kind of glad that they finally did realize that and brought it down and not just came out with the super versions and gave us the performance uplift, but actually brought the price down as well. So kind of a two-parter there. And granted, it was just a shift of their performances down the line, but hey, I'll take what I can get. So this 2070 super card is actually looking like the golden child of this uh, release. The 5700 and 5700 XT at their current price points is a little not palatable, especially when you're looking at the two game uh, bonus that the 2070s and 2060 Supers come with. And we will be seeing the 2080 Super come out in about a month. And they said that was due out about the 23rd of July. So we'll probably be seeing a little bit about that as well in the coming weeks. So that is all I have for you today. Hope you've enjoyed it. You know, we will be covering on 7.7 or 7.8 the roundup of all of the benchmarks and stuff for the new Ryzen 3000 series. So we will check back with you in a couple days when the dust starts to settle and give you a nice comprehensive review of where everything is at. But you kind of get an idea right now with all these leaks, what we will see, but you know, you never know until the Vel is fully pulled back and we can see all the little bits and features and have very detailed reviews. Yeah, there's a lot of sites out there that do a very good job and we'll be touching on those come our next video. So stay tuned, be sure to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one.